um, I'm initially from Iraq, born in Baghdad, but um, of a Kurdish background. It's one thing to it's one thing to say that um, um, I love the Ahlul Bayt, but then when on the day of judgment, when when I get questioned, what did you, what did you, how did you serve them? What did you do for them? What, what am I going to say? I mean, I can't just I can't just say to my Lord, oh, I, I love them, and that's it. I mean, the words words mean nothing. Yeah. So I guess from there, it it was more of you know attending Manjalis. Um, commemorating um, these uh, 14 individuals, be it through, be it through just reading about them, um, or as I said, crying for them. Uh, so it's you know the the narration of be happy on the days we are happy and be sad on the days that we are sad. That stuck, that that remained in, inside me, and I've always I've always tried to uh, carry that with me. So it, it was more of a sense that okay. Uh, I can't just blindly say I love the Hulu Bait and say, what did you do about it? It, it made, like, I had to take it a step further kind of thing. The first Majlis I attended was, would have been, I think, the martyrdom of the Prophet, peace be upon him, about what, probably three years, two to three years ago, something something like that. That was the first, it was, it was quiet, it was small, it was, it was, an, uh, it was an English Majlis. I didn't know what to expect, I think uh, my friend told me to go along. Um, I, the lecture I, I quite liked. I, I love that the, the lecture was, was talking about you know, akhlaq and how we should interact with others, and uh, I love that. And then the at the end where you, where you actually remember how you know the, when the prophet died, and then that's when emo your emotional strings are played on. I think that that was different. That's something that I've never really experienced in that sense before. I, I've never really really had that. I guess for me, it was always about you know logical reasoning and and breaking it down. But when when it became to an emotional attachment uh, and feeling that first emotional level, it would have been that majlis and the first time I heard um, Imam Hussein's story. For example, it was just for me it was just names and numbers, seventy-two versus thousands, whatever. Okay, it, it, it was just words on a paper at the time. It was no image painted in my head. But the first time I heard about um, Abdullah al the the child, and his, um, I mean, what was his crime? That's that's the first time that, I, you know, I, I truly felt something about um, Ashura and Karbala, and like, truly, this man gave everything for the religion. I mean, and if there's only 72 of them, then why should I why should I care about the majority now? At the time, the majority of Muslims they all opposed. There's only 72, so why should why should why should I care about the majority of the people do? As long as you have that sincere connection with the, your Prophet, your Ahlul Bayt, and your Allah, do your own thing. And I'm I'm I'm, I'm a strong believer in that. To be honest with you, it, it wasn't the like uh, the battle. Um, at Karbala wasn't the one of the first things I looked at, if I'm honest. It became later on because I wanted to break it down in terms of order of history. And that, that was something that happened 50 years after the Prophet's demise. But when it when I first looked at it, and it's like, why would 72 people go into a battle knowing that against however many thousands, you know you're going to be killed. But it's, it's all for the... Once you truly understand it's for the sake of Allah, once these pictures are painted in your head, and you truly see that they died just for the message and for the Quran. And then it's it's not just Imam Hussein, alayhi salam. When it's all all fourteen, all fourteen of the infallibles. You see, each and every one of them was martyred for the message, for the Quran, for the sake of Allah. At the end of the day, that's what we have, we have to remember. I mean, it's, it's all well and good, truly, like you know, mourning Imam Hussein. But we need to remember why we're we doing this. Why, why we're mourning Imam Hussein? We're mourning. The Prophet were mourning the uh, Imams to seek nearness to Allah, and end of, end of the day, that that was that's my main question. Everything we should do, we, we should be to seek nearness to, to Allah and to better ourselves. And I think the Ahlul Bayt, um, alayhi salam, has definitely brought that out of me more. It's whenever I'm about to do something in my life, I would always relate relate it back to you know to the Ahlul Bayt. What would like what would they do? How would, how, would they, how would they act? And, and it's made me sort of think about my actions more. Before it was, I was rash, you know, stubborn, quick, 
I make I would take decisions right without really thinking about them. Now I have more of a you know conscience that God is watching me and Allah I would like to say guided me through them. I mean at the end of the day once you truly understand that these were you know infallible individuals you and you read you learn more about their lives and you read you read their, their biographies it truly inspires you I mean it wants in the sense that it's going to bring out hopefully your better side and your and your better char characteristics I think um it's definitely accepting Ahlul Bayt in my life has made me more of a calm headed person to learn to bite my tongue more to to to, to understand that these these individuals, even when in, in, they were in the right, for example, the Prophet was pelted with stones, he'd, he'd be bleeding from head to toe, but he would still stay silent and he'd pray for forgiveness from the enemies, for his, uh, for his enemies. And it's, you know, it's, it's stuff like this which makes you realize how trivial and silly matters, you know, petty arguments in your life truly, truly is. I mean, we, we fight or argue over something so stupid when these individuals went through so so much more for for us to, to they gave up their lives their families just just for us and i think truly when you truly understand understand that it how how can you not love these individuals how can you not want to serve these individuals you know to to seek closeness to allah these two two friends uh, they would they want I don't think they'd want me to mention the names, but um, I, I'd, I'd give everything for them I mean, I see them as the, without doubt they're brothers to me without them. I wouldn't Without their patience and the support to, to why To when I was bombarding them with questions and I, I know looking back at it now I didn't realize at the time but I was you know, or not, and may have been annoying or irritating I'd be calling them up. What about this? Uh, what, what, where'd you get this from? Give, prove me the source kind of thing and then I get the references, go read the references, and then I would provide counter arguments. And it's, I, I can, I guess I was probably aggressive in the sense of, you know, oh, what about this? What about this? But they always maintained a calm um, attitude towards me. It was because it's very easily an argument if you, if you go towards aggressively towards someone, immediately they're going to want to defend themselves and, and they become shielded kind of thing. But no, they were very open minded, very. Uh, caring for my needs, and I think looking looking back at it now, I, I I can't thank them enough for what they, you know, they inspired in me, and they they'd always be in my prayers, and as I said, they're like brothers to me, these two. Yeah, this year I uh, went, I decided to go to Hajj, and Alhamdulillah, um, Allah accepted me, and I was um, allowed to go. Um, it was my first real. Any of any Islamic trip, I haven't been on any ziyara before. I've never been to Umrah before, so it was it was the first thing, kind of like to get thrown into the deep end. And I guess it's no matter what you say to someone, it's it's, it's difficult to prepare them for for such a trip. I mean, it's it's completely there's two parts to the trip. Let's say there's Medina and there's Mecca. They're completely different. Medina, when you first arrive, is more of a, you know calm, peace, serenity. You're alone. This is and this is your prophet. He's right in front of you kind of thing and you, you, you're left in awe I think it, it's you, you get lost for words and it's a feeling that I'll, I'll never be able to uh, explain and then Baqir the first time when you see those those lonely graves of those Imams I think I've, I've formed because uh, always when you ask someone who which Imam are you close to uh, each person has their own story kind of thing of which Imam they feel honest to and I think for me now it's without doubt it's Imam Hassan uh, alayhi salam. I mean, you, you just see he's even to this day. At least Imam Hussein has 20 million today. You look at Imam Hassan, he's alone. He's even to this day, 1400 years after he's he's uh, martyred and poisoned, the whole world is against him. He's by himself, and uh, you, it's it's weird, but you can you can you can even feel the sweet the sweetness in the air of Baqi. I think uh, you, you, anyone who who has been can definitely I mean relate to that. And then uh, Mecca was, was out of this world, out, truly, truly out of this world. I mean, the. I think the first that that first glance of the Kaaba. It's it's something you know. It's it's an image, which will remain for me till, till I die, and I'm hoping I'll I'll, I'll I'll die picturing this image, just before I think, 
I, I passed, but it's, it was uh, it was fantastic. And the group I went with, fortunately, it was it was a great group. I, with, there's a lot of people our age, the scholars and the speakers I were with us were very helping, and uh, very understanding. And I I love the trip, and I would if 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 any future ziyaras, inshallah, if I get to attend Iraq, they come even close to this, then I I can't wait. At the end of the day, it's for me, Hajj is it's about you know, emotions, letting yourself go, completely giving yourself to, to Allah. I mean, when you, when you stand there and say, Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik, when you, it's like you're telling God, here I am. I'm like, I'm, I'm here today, I'm, I'm, here. I'm giving my life to you. And, you, and you. and it's like everyone is dressed in white, so it's a sea of white. We're all equals at this point. At this point. Arafah, the night of Arafah and the day after, there's a narration, I believe, I think it was Imam Sadiq says anyone who doubts he has been forgiven on this day has committed a sin that's just to show the mercy of Allah that no matter what you've done in your life anything you've what you are touched like you're born again on, on that day and, and you know it's it's you you just have to go there to yourself to see that you know the emotions completely taking everyone over it was it was a beautiful beautiful experience that every, from everything about it from the tawaf from the nights you you sleep in the streets in Muzdalifa to the Umrah perform everything, I, I, it's truly it was a incredible incredible experience. Yeah, I mean, w w without that, I see like my attitude towards life is, is has I wouldn't say completely changed, but it, it's different in the sense. Before, I wanted you know to have to have a good life, you know, to, to get to get money, be, become rich, etc., live a comfortable lifestyle. But then I came across a narration again, and it was it, it plays it plays in your head, and I try to remember it whenever I can. Is that you will not be regarded a true believer until you see the misfortunes as blessings and the luxury as disaster. I think it was by uh, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. And and it's interesting because any anything any misfortunes that before you in this life, you have to you have to just see what say the Zainab went through. Um, after Ashura, and it's, it's it's nothing in comparison. So now I'm just I I don't want to say I'd look forward to having misfortunes, but I, I I definitely wish to now stay away from luxury in the sense before I would I would wanted to go more nearer towards luxury. In in the case that you know it might take you away from Allah, or so I always want to keep that. I just I, I don't know how to put, how to put it, but I just I say a modest modest future instead of chasing wild dreams and earthly desires.